Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. And I've been asked to comment on emerging potential regulatory frameworks for artificial intelligence in the European Union. So with the caveat, this is all developing as we speak, and this is purely in the proposal stage. What this regulation seems to be intended to do is establish two things. First is to address some potential misuses of AI in things like live surveillance and biases that may uh, emerge in automated reporting processes such as establishing credit worthiness. Um, the second thing is to set up an economic development framework for companies operating within the EU to advance this field within this regulatory schema. Again, lots uncertain here. There's not a lot of precedence on um, the regulation of artificial intelligence, even while it's uh, an issue that generates concern globally. So suppose they do come to some standard and it's adopted, satisfying balancing interests. Will, will it work would be the next question. And I think the cons are relatively easy to see here. So on the one hand, this is a global industry, global practices. Um, apply to local conditions. So whatever the EU says for the operating conditions in their regulatory environment, will this influence the behavior of firms operating elsewhere? And it may even have a foothold via the, the internet in the EU. Secondly, this is technology in this field changes very rapidly and it's often difficult to ascertain the border between normal analytics and the application of artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, moreover, you might think it's a challenge for uh, bureaucracy to keep up with developments in this field, given this dynamism. On the other hand, this is not unprecedented to have a local de facto regulator set standards that are global or at least broader. So within the United States, for instance, uh, Texas tends to set the standards for high school textbooks because of the, the sheer size and heft of their market. Uh, California tends to set de facto emission standards for vehicles, again, just because of the sheer size and heft of their markets. And presumably others are willing to go along with that or, or uh, manufacturers at least assume that this makes the most economic sense in terms of optimizing their own behavior. You know, and, and the EU has some precedence in this respect to GDPR or the general data protection regulation um, influences the record keeping and privacy of firms, how they use personal data, how they distribute personal data. Uh, and this is something that has become the de facto global standard for firms that wish to operate in the European Union. Um, moreover, there is an argument to be made for reducing uncertainty around investments in AI. Given that this is a contentious and controversial issue, having legal clarity for firms, assuming that the regulations are actually of good quality, may enable them to make more uh, useful investments because they're clear about what will be legal and which directions they could go. Uh, moreover, there are some provisions within the current uh, proposals for investments in public goods. So things like shared data sets, that enable firms to uh, leverage one another, uh, leverage one another's efforts in the same way that you know the U.S. economy has in, benefited from investments in basic science research, for instance. So it'll be interesting to see this play out.